Are we good? We're good. Look at us go. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Friday at eight o'clock and the pub doors are open. <laughs> we are open. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Katie's Arms here um, on Insta Live with me, Katie Hopkins, dressed as Bagpuss. This is my Bagpuss sweater, we decided. Um, and a quick explainer, because I don't think I've done an explainer for a while, have I? If you're new here, um, this is our... Cheers, Durham is here. Um, hello, I'm not that amazing. I'm very ordinary, uh, which is why we get along. Um, so do have a look here at who's here, uh, what countries are here. Uh, it's very restorative to know that you're not on your own. <laughs> Pink lady, I know, thank you very much. Australia is here. Welcome to Australia. Um, so just to let you know, if you're new here, this is our pub online. We've been going now, I don't know how long, for three years, is it? For North Wales is here. Do you know what this is? This is posh. This is posh. Um, and oh, Gold Coast is here as well. Hello to the Gold Coast. And it's a pub where we all get together. We try and remember what it used to be like in pub days when we all just got together, didn't give two single shits and thought whatever you want, said whatever you want, ended up under a table and that was still fine. So you can say what you want here. You take the piss out of me all you want. I'll take the piss out of myself. And essentially everybody is good as long as you let everyone else think whatever they want to think. And I want everyone to be about as happy as they can be. Those are basically the pub rules. Gloucester is here. New Zealand is in that. South Indiana. Welcome. I nearly did welcome. Don't know why. Um, Scotland. Scotland. Someone calling me a MILF. Yes, I know. Yes. <laughs> I'm really not. Hey, I had, to sh I had to shave my legs last night because I was speaking at the Oxford Union, right? So Oxford University, oldest debating chamber, la la la, Tom Hanks is there tonight. So I was Tom Hanks's warm up act. And um, so I was speaking there, supposed to be kind of, you know, prestigious, la la la. And beforehand, so I was in a hotel room and I had to get ready in a dress. And the dress goes down just about to my, my knees, right? So I needed to shave my leg up to my knee. Which is a very efficient form of shaving that I call couture shaving. So it's sort of like on Savile Row when people have suits made to measure. Well, I do made to measure shaving and other people out there will understand this. Other ladies will know. We'll just shave the area that someone might see or someone might touch. And if we're just going out with someone we know, we won't bother at all. But like I have a certain top, you'll know probably the one because given you know my wardrobe by now, which is quite extensive these days. Um, that, like if you have a top like this, so you've got this armpit out, it's very probable that I'm only going to shave this armpit. Do you know what I mean? Like in the shower, if it's a choice of like being on time, being late, I'll just shave the one armpit because, and. So last night I was trying to shave my legs in the shower, but it was one of those showers that they've put in after the event, you know, so that you've got an ensuite. But it's not really an ensuite because it's just a tiny little box shoved on the side of your room. And it was one of those showers where, yes, leave it on for the winter plumage. Exactly. We all need a bit of a Velcro layer. <laughs> but then sometimes you go to pull on something like a pair of tights. You know the tights, ladies. <laughs> I shave where the knee rips are in my jeans. <laughs> That's my girl. I once tried to iron. a. Um, I had to be out in the parade square and my collar wasn't lying flat. I once tried to iron my collar for my army shirt on my way out to the parade square and I burnt the whole of my neck. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, oh, I know. So leg hair or two things, the leg hair story and leg hair generally with tights. So when you buy these tights that are the most unattractive tights you ever saw, ladies will know. Ladies will know. You know, the ones they are like they're like four, four thousand denier. Like they are pitch black, coal black. When you put them on, you can't see, all you can see is black. There's no leg in there, apparently. Those tights, and they make them really soft, like if you get posh ones. And then when you pull them up, have I got them on now? Oh, I still got them on. Oh, I can't really do this here, can I? <laughs> I can't, can't I? So what you do, <laughs> this wasn't my plan. So look here, for people, this is really for people that say like I'm milfy or whatever. This is a tight here, see it here? So this is my trousers, right? And th these are tights 
that start at my feet. Literally, look. And you can just keep... Hold on. See if I can keep going. Just for those that think I'm really attractive. You see? T <laughs> Literally tights on. <laughs> that go up to here. I love it. I love it. In the winter, there is nothing better than this. And then what you can do is wear like a T-shirt and you tuck it into the tights so that you're a cent... Oh, it's quite high up in the crotch now. Hold on. <laughs> Bit of a of an undercarriage issue so um so you can tuck your t-shirt into the tights can't you katie you're alleged right we all do this you tuck it in like that <clears throat> and then you slap that up get the track and you're basically <laughs> you're basic oh hold on i've really got to get out of this oh you're basically a central heating unit because nothing can escape the situation that's what's going on underneath all of this. So to ever said that I, you know, looked hot, think on. Anyway, I was trying to shave my legs last night in the shower, but it was one of those showers where you have to make a choice, right? You're either, why have I got tights on under my trousers? Were you outdoors today, love, at all? Were you? <laughs> it was minus three when I was about in Oxford this morning. And this is a cold situation. And these trousers, let me show you what happens with these trousers at the bottom. Do you see? They, they, they're, they're a mid shin and I know that the cool and trendy thing to do is like oh yeah look my trousers stop halfway down my fucking leg you know let's just have my ankles out and you know maybe slip on a bloody driving shoe but I say f that I am 50 well I'm not 48 but you know I'm 50 years old I'm not out to impress any bastard and I'm not wafting around with half a shin out f that Mother, if you're watching, go. Monty Don. Do you know what I mean? Give me a tight any day. Also, tights, I've just explained. At least you haven't got pop socks on. Oh, I own those as well. Don't you worry. I've got the knee-high ones. I've got the ankle ones. Mm -mm. I love me a knee-high pop sock. So, the shower, you had to choose. You could either be upright, washing your hair, but you couldn't be down shaving because if you were down shaving either you had to put your like whole asshole into the corner to, to try and read or in the end what I had to do was like try and get a leg up like this and shave it like this which is quite insulting when you think about it that the shower is not even big enough to shave your damn legs in so that went on and then I was at the union speaking and I don't know if you've seen uh thermal leggings for the win Come on, pop sock. Not heard that term for years. That's why. That's why we're here. That's why. Because no one says this shit. Because everybody's busy pretending on Instagram that they're fucking terrific. Look, this is me putting up my Christmas decorations. Aren't they beautiful? Look at this. This is my Christmas tree. It's so pretty, just like me. Mm. This is me. Look, I've got a pink Christmas tree this year because I just had a baby daughter and I need you all to know about it. <laughs> this is me putting up a wreath using a shower pole. <clears throat> oh, go and get a fucking hobby. Christ. Oh, is there anything worse than homely women being homely? Oh, spare me. Oh, look how beautiful my shit looks. Oh. That that's only just narrowly beaten by the people who tidy who fold things. Watch me fold a pair of jeans. Oh, thank you. I'd rather take a bread knife and cut off my own labia. Cheers, but sure, I'm gonna watch you fold some jeans. That'd be marvellous. Mm. Ah. The other thing people say, actually this happened to me last night at the Oxford Union with young people. People that don't know the Katie's arms, like we do, us regulars. Uh, they say, is she drunk? How many has she had to drink? So we'll just do a little explainer for the slow people at the back. This is the first wine that's passed my lips today and it hasn't actually gone down, although it is a very, very large glass. <laughs> so last night after the debate, this cute boy who'd been like, I could see he wanted to ask something. I could see he wanted to ask. He went, would you mind me asking? Would you? Are you, are you on something? <laughs> so it's funny 
So the same thing that some people think when they're here for the first time. Oh, Bolton's here. Baltic, if you know that. Fucking brag, look at me, right? I hope I, I hope I did that justice. Look at me doing this thing. Look at me dancing. It's always women, isn't it? My, my age dancing in the kitchen to some music or other. I don't need anybody. I'm so brave. I'm so powerful. And I'm so free. Look at me dancing because I think I look so good. And it's like, mm, you do need someone, don't you, bird? Because that's why you've set up a camera in your own kitchen to film yourself dancing because you think you look good and you want people to tell you look you look good so that you'll be OK. And then you're going to spend the rest of your morning reading the comments of people watching you dancing, telling you look that you look good in order that you feel better about yourself. Mm. So all of this, I don't need anybody, just everybody watching Instagram to tell me that I'm fucking fantastic. Mm? And woe betide anybody who happens to go on there and go, I think you look like an old hag. Because you're not allowed to criticise. That's the rule with all of these weirdos that want to show off. You're only allowed to say, oh, you look so good. You look so hot. Oh, my God, your decorations are amazing. Oh, I love the way you make your fucking ice cubes. Ah, off. Oh. Get me a big bag from Lidl and go, oh. If you're making ice cubes with a flower in, also, fuck off. I mean, oh. To pray, pray, pray. I never sit next to someone who makes ice cubes with a flower in. Oh. Anyway, how are we doing? <laughs> we leave. We need a live of Mr. and Mrs. with you and lovely Mark. No. <laughs> lovely Mark is lovely. We all know. Lovely Mark has his own fan club. We all know. Oh, can I just say, in case they're out here, <laughs> be kind. Hashtag fuck be kind. Be honest. When did the hashtag be kind ever apply to me? <laughs> Not that it's about me, totally about me, but be kind. They always say that, don't they? When the, when the real losers know they've done something really shitty or they've been shitty, but then they want to make it okay. Hashtag be kind. Oh, hashtag fuck off. Hashtag fuck oh. off. Same with, um, what do people say that really grips my shit? Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Oh, Hashtag fuck off. No. Just because they learnt it during the age of corona bollocks. Stay safe. Oh, they couldn't, you know, they're always the weak sort of people that couldn't save you from anything. Actual real men, you know, fighting military men. You know, Go on, bird. You know, proper boys. It's always the weedy ones that if something actually, a shit went down, they'd be entirely reliant on me to save their lives. Stay safe. Oh, right, what were we supposed to be talking about? Um, great dancing, Katie. Strictly next year. Oh, well, wouldn't that be a laugh if they asked me? <laughs> They'd be in for a shock. I tell you, the core on this thing. It's like an apple. <laughs> there would be accusations. I could go on as their first transgender, couldn't I? Because that would probably get me on, right? If I pretended that I'm actually trans. Because, you know, people say that I'm trans. So maybe if I was like, yes, I am, I'm, I'm trans. They'd be like, oh, we'll have Katie on then. <laughs> be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> if I went on as trans, me, but trans, who would they partner me with? A man or a woman? I guess a big guy, because I'm tall. And that would be amazing. Yeah, celebrity big brother, done that. Done that, was right. I was supposed to have been in just till, oh yes, I was going to talk about the jungle, which I'm not watching, but I just wanted to say something about it. Marry you, you're serious. I can't. A, I've been married twice now already. First marriage lasted less than a year. First husband ran off with the secretary. I know. And then lovely Mark. So I can't, you know, and everybody loves lovely Mark. And if ever I did anything to, you know, if ever I was dastardly to lovely Mark, no one would forgive me. Like everybody now, it seems, has forgiven me all of my sins, you know, or at least accepts that I don't give a single shit what. Um, in the sense that, no, I do care what, um, I don't deliberately set out to uh, piss people off, but I don't actually mind if you are pissed off about me because that's your shit. You know, I know I'm not perfect. I've done a ton of stuff wrong. A lot of it's been photographed. I've been made to look a twat more times than, well, David Cameron probably, and that's a fucking record. 
but I know I'm not bloody perfect. But if I was to hurt lovely Mark, oh, God save me. So I can't marry you now. I slept with my brother. Yes, so I was. I went in as the most hated of all time. And so the idea was, and I think from the producer's point of view, it was like, oh, get her in. And then I was like, mm, I'll be out within a week because they'll just vote me out. So I was like, in, out, boom, get your fee, go home. And then I ended up being this. And so everyone was like, oh, actually, she's all right. And so I was kept in right till the end. And I'd run out of clothes after like four days, I think. Because that was a bit, a bit of a drama. Um, so should we gossip about the jungle? Opinions on Nella Oh, here. Don't lie. No fucks are given after 40. I don't know. I think it's I think it, when people say no shit's given, sometimes it's a, a bit of a hide. So, oh, I don't care what she says or oh, whatever that silly cow says about me. I don't care. I think that hides a lot, actually. I think a lot of people say that, but they don't mean it. And actually, they've been really upset by what someone said about them. And I think it's really hard then for people to talk about it. Whereas what I think is, and a lot of you will know this, is that sometimes people tell you things deliberately to hurt you. And they tell you things that someone else said because they want to enjoy watching you be hurt. And um, I feel it's really important to do two things then. One is to make that person know that you know. So you would say to them, it would seem strange to me that you would tell me that because you know that would be hurtful to me. Stop leave them with it and they'll go oh but oh but I know I did it oh I never meant to oh I'm so I feel so bad I never meant to tell you that to her oh I would never want to say nothing say nothing hold it give it back to them you know I always say this with the do I have any post-it notes when people try and I'm just looking at Mark's desk he gets really pissy when I steal things off his desk but I kind of want to yeah He'd be like, where are my yellow post-its? Have you seen my yellow post-its? He doesn't speak like that. So when people try and come up to you and um, I have to do it on skin, I think. Yeah. Stick on you. Oh, oh, I heard that so-and-so said this about you. Oh, oh, I heard that. Oh, well, in the group chat, everybody says, that's a classic line that is, everybody says, and they try and do this to you. And you mustn't allow that, right? So, so little Miss Bitch Face, who pretends to be your friend. Oh, everybody says... Oh, I'm surprised you would tell me that because you'll know how hurtful that would be. And you're literally, I'm just sticking it behind, back on them. Do you see? I'll do it like this. You're st I'm trying to make this visually there. <laughs> you take it and you, you stick it back on them and then you hold your tongue. Oh, I'm surprised you would tell me that because you know that would be hurtful. So this one, oh, um, well, yes, yeah, so-and-so said that you're, you looked a bit podgy in that dress. Whatever. Oh, that seems to be a really unkind thing to pass along. Stick it back on them and then you hold your tongue. Because the most powerful thing you have is to own the space of silence. So don't allow those things to happen to you. And don't act like it doesn't matter what, oh, she's a silly cow. Oh, well. And don't indulge them with your responses, right? Because what these people do that come at you with this, oh, so-and-so said that they hated your sweater. They want you to say, oh, well, she's a fat cow anyway and I hate her and, well, screw it, have you seen what she wears? Blah, blah, blah. They want that because then they've been filled up with more of that stuff that they can go into the, oh, well, she said to you, blah, 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 blah. They, that's how they thrive. Don't give them that. Don't give them any power over your life. Don't tell them stuff. Don't fill them up. Imagine them like a thirsty car or a thirsty cow. Don't give them stuff to fill them up. Let them own their own kindness. And the other thing I think is really important in yourself is if you feel hurt by something, you have to say, why is that hurtful? Well, they made me feel like shit. Why did they make me feel like shit? Well, because I made an effort and I wanted everybody to like it and I wanted to feel better about myself and they made me feel worse about myself. OK, so how do I make myself feel better about myself? Well, I need to park this thought. And then you have to literally physically decide to I'm looking for a box or similar. Here we go. You have to literally decide. Right. Well, I know why she did that to me. You know what? She can own that back. I'm going to say to her, I'm surprised you told me that because it was unkind. And then when you're ready, you put it away in a box 
and you pop it on the shelf and you get on with your day and you make an agreement with yourself every time it's like because you know what happens is you can be just doing do 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 you can just be having a little you could be doing the hoovering and you'll be like oh she said that about me why would she say that about me and then you have to literally make yourself go right here it is I'm putting it back in the box and I'm giving myself a break do you see you have to take it off this that just makes you go crazy put it away and give yourself a break there I don't know how we got onto that but we did Say less, that makes them think why there is no reaction. Exactly. Hold your power, is what we say. Now, what did we want to talk about, everybody? You've got loads of boxes. Yes. Has anything ever been said about you that really hurts? Oh, golly, yes. Lots, lots, always, all the time. All the time. Not not now because, you know, it's been long. But just um, the things that hurt the most over the time... Um, were, have always been, are, sometimes still now, when people have known me, known me, known me, like work with me or I've let them into my heart a bit and then when the shit hit the fan they were willing to just run away and pretend like they never knew or even go involved in the mob thing to protect themselves, to self-preserve when they knew me, that... I think bosses firing me when they knew I did a good job, but they just had to let me go because I really liked my work. That. Um, and when I was taken over to be given the Cunt of the Year award, that was probably the worst of all because they used things I really cared about. I think we've talked about this before. Um, they used the South African farmers that I spent time with. Um, that was the, how they tricked me into going. They didn't go to get an award. I went because they said the South Africans needed me. And uh, yeah, that was that was the worst. So yeah, there's been lots, lots and lots and lots of things that have been dastardly. But you know, I also say, I said this last night to the kiddies at um, the Oxford Union, is when you put yourself out there, uh, a bit like what I was talking about at the front end, you have to own all of it, don't you? You can't just expect that, you know, oh, here I am, look at me, you know, advertising leggings. <laughs> Not that I would ever advertise leggings with my issues. <laughs> You can't then expect everyone to be kind or nice or only say nice things. So, and also I was very annoying to people because I just said what the shit I thought, given, you know, and I never really gave two t tits and so they'd be mean back. So you have to own all your shit. I think, put yourself out there, suck it up. And I have done. I'm just answering your questions, honestly. Um, but that's kind of why with The Jungle, which I'm not watching. Um, Jamie, what's she called? Britney's sister. A, don't go on a TV programme just because you're someone's sister. Like, just because you're so named Spears, don't cruise off your... It was Britney they wanted. They can't get Britney, so they booked you. What a tragic thing. Don't be on a programme just because you've got a famous brother or sister. And that goes out to Thomas Markle and Meghan Markle's sister or whatever. Don't be so lame. Go and find your own bloody job. Don't, you know, grab onto your sister's ankles, you silly cow. And then whoever else... And bear in mind, I have not been watching, but I don't give a shit. These are my views. Um, Grace Dent, whatever the hell she is, trying to hide behind glasses, and um, Spears, they quit, right? Oh, for fuck's sake. Get over yourselves, you pathetic, little, stupid, tiny women. You signed up to do a chuffing reality show. It's a film set in Australia with a few bugs in it. You can smell the crew's McDonald's. You can see all the camera positions. You know where the security is stationed. If you're not stupid, you could see the, mecha the sort of mechanics of the set. Stop being so pathetic. You've been paid a fee. Sack it up. Do what you're supposed to do or lose and go home. But don't cry off. Don't have a medical issue. You pathetic women. Grace Dent, you're pathetic. Jamie, whatever, whatever. Britney's sister, you're pathetic. There's people out here that go to work, and I, I've been a cleaner, I've been the Woolworths girl, I've been the checkout chick, go to work on a checkout all bloody day to feed their families. So Grace Dent and Jamie Lee, whatever your name is, know that this big old bird thinks you're absolutely pathetic. And I say that having some celebrity experience. Just, that just makes you, all of them, when they cry off, or someone that does, what was her face that did Strictly and then cried off? Help me. 
Um, Abingdon, I want to say, is it? Amanda Abingdon, is that right? I mean, just, just don't sign. If you're, if you're not mentally strong, F off and get mentally strong. Or, or if you're struggling, you know, okay, I get it, fine, you've got mental issues. Maybe don't sign up for a massive TV show. Maybe spend some time on the coastline going for a walk or, you know, go and help out at a dog shelter. Maybe do things that make you mentally strong instead of demanding and craving attention and then realising you can't hack it because not everyone is being nice to you all of the time. Fuck's sake. It's dancing. Oh. You see, that's what happens with posh wine. Nearly choked. Shall I tell you some things? One and a half million for Farage. What can I say? <laughs> if there's a paycheck. <laughs> so, let me tell you things that lovely Mark told me to say. Or to let you know. So Bournemouth, you know, we sold out for the Christmas gig on the 23rd of December. We sold out ages ago. I can't wait to do it. Guess what we've got? We've got large inflatable decorations. <laughs> because I had this idea, right, that we would throw them out into the stadium, you know. And Mark was like, you do realise it's just a few people in Bournemouth. I was like, no, 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 it's going to be epic. Anyway, we have a few more tickets because we added some more seats. So Bournemouth on the 23rd of December, if you can come to that, it's just going to be a Christmas laugh. Drinking games. I feel like we're going to have some drinking games. Can be Who can beat me at drinking Merlot? Woking and we've got a little speakeasy. There's a few tickets left. That's in the 20th of December, Wokingham. And that Woking was a thank you. This was a thank you gig because these were the guys that I think one of the first speakeasies that began the speakeasy thing for me. And then in the new year, two other thank yous. One was Stroud. So there's 11th of January in Stroud. And also, oh, yeah, a little secret, secret, secret speakeasy in Bath, which is a really limited number. I think we're only going to be about 35 of us. So I'm literally going to be sat on your lap. Um, but all sorts of, you know, just because it's so important, we want to do all these different things. The other thing that um, Mark says is a soon to be released. That was his phrase. Well, <laughs> What does he think he is? Netflix. Soon to be released. Da, da, da. The north of Ireland, Northern Ireland, I'm coming. <laughs> the Republic of Ireland, stand by your beds. Scotland. We have a Scottish venue that says it will not uh, cancel on us. And where else? Now, that will really piss the Welsh government off, especially when I drive there at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> so, um, so Northern Ireland, uh, Scotland and Wales, we have venues. And obviously, once I can get there and show people what we do, uh, we can always get more venues because people see that it's actually lovely. And we're nearly there with the... We because for all the people that can't couldn't make it on this tour for infectious, uh, a lovely camera crew agreed to come and help us out on mates rates, and we've put together uh, Katie Hopkins live at Blackpool, and that's going to be it's about an hour long, what would have been I guess a DVD, but now will be a link with access. We're nearly there with that, so that will be being released for Christmas. So maybe if there was someone that couldn't come to a show, it's a good Christmas present for them. I don't know. And maybe someone's having a hard time. It will be helpful because they'll just get the sense of it's much more. I'm hoping that the end thing will be much more of the what the feeling is like of being at one of these things. So not necessarily about me being on the stage, but, you know, I think we've got like the walk up. We've got me in hair and makeup. I think we've got the crowd chatting. Just just the whole feel of being together in a room with people who don't really give a shit as long as you're OK. And if you're not OK, they'll try and help you. That's what this DVD, which won't be a DVD anymore, obviously, is supposed to be like, hopefully. I don't know. I can't bear to look because I can't bear to watch myself. Um, I better go, haven't I? Do I have a podcast? Not really. Not really. And um, this is kind of it. 
because I think there are too many podcasts. I think everybody has a podcast. I think people who shouldn't have a podcast probably have a podcast. And I think the whole podcast thing's a bit wanky because people are trying to make money off it usually. And I'm always being invited to speak on people's podcasts. So I think, well, maybe, and I try and support people who have them. You'll see me doing some. But really, I just try and come on here because it's just me being me with all my issues. And I think sometimes that's helpful, like the fact that I've got tights on that go up to my nipples. <laughs> I feel like this is probably about as honest as it gets, right? So um, that's why I don't have a podcast. And I'm so lucky um, to be able to have stages that have held. And my honest belief is that my job is to help people get away from Zoom, get away from, I know we're here online, right? But that to get away from the, the evolution of this is me in a theatre with you. And my whole push is to be in a room with people. Like I won't do Zoom podcasts anymore because I believe Zoom is part of the problem. And the more we can get people face to face, the more people leave genuinely feeling better because people need people. And that's all been part of the lie is to try and shut you down and make you feel like you're on your own and you're not. And you're not. Because you got me and you got these guys. Okay, my loves. Um, we are up, to, we're up on another Katie's Arms. Thank you to all the lovely Americans on the road that stopped me in Miami and in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale. The lady at the American Airlines Lounge at the airport at Palm Beach International who's here with us. Uh, and is a big fan of the Katie's Arms. It's just a, such a strange thing to be walking down a street in America and people go, Katie's Arms, we love it. So that's what you guys um, have made and built and are part of. And there's a lot of us out there now. So have a great weekend. Remember to give yourself a break. Remember, if anything, anyone upsets you, you work through why it's upset you. You, you take, oh. That was my post-it note. Well, most importantly, if someone's deliberately upsetting you, you remind them that it's strange that you would want to hurt me like that. And you give it back to them and you let them own it. But if something's twirling around in your brain, you work through it. Then you pop it in the box and you physically watch yourself putting it. Oh, oh shit. Nearly knocked my wine glass over. You physically watch yourself putting it on a shelf to give your brain chance to be free. And then go out find the fun, do the naughtiest thing you can do, cover yourself in baby oil and rub your naked body along your neighbour's conservatory for no reason whatsoever, just for the joy. Okay, cheers everybody. Uh, thanks so much for all your kindness and your kind words and um, all your support and uh, know that there are more good people out there than there are bad and I'm certain of that. <laughs>